Hi and welcome, I'm Marcy Best, current independent demonstrator with Stamping Up. <laughs> and I'm from Clovis, California. Thank you for joining me today. I even turned off my YouTube volume and it still pops on, but I had to go off and come back on anyway, uh, just so I can make sure I can see the chat. And now I need to turn off my volume. So there's a lot of electronical things to learn about YouTube. Um, and a video in general when you're doing videos and especially live what needs to be turned off and I've mentioned before I can't turn my volume off while my while I'm starting my video because I have to hear my music so that I know when to switch screens and it's just this whole technical thing um, so sorry about the volume still being on I have a lot of fun tips and tricks I want to share with you today so Stay tuned for those. Hi, Deborah. How are you? Hi, Annie. Uh, Indica. I always have to look over at my cheat note because I have it like sounded out because I'm finally saying it right, I think. How are you? And I did see your message that you received my Christmas card. I'm glad you did. You know, when you send it to another country, who knows? You know, so I'm glad you did. I've gotten some returned that I sent locally. Not, not even locally, but in the U.S. Um, and they came back with... Some of them, the addresses were correct and it said return to sender. Some of them, which I think it just got delivered to the wrong address, I'm guessing, um, because the ad addresses were fine. Anyway, it's just crazy. Uh, hi, Roxanne. Hi, Eileen. Marsha, Kathy, I know you're excited about your starter kit. I can't wait for you to get it. Uh, see some fun creations. Hi, Carol. Hi, Barb. Welcome. Melody, Kathy. Oh, your first real snowfall in Minnesota. Ooh, very, very cold. Trina, hello, how are you? Hi, Marva. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Sandy. Lots of new people from Maine. Rose Carey from Palmdale, California. I'm in Clovis, which is right in the middle of... Fresno is like the middle of the state, and we're like right next to it. I think Madera actually is the heart of California, which is... The next town over oh let's see hi melanie how are you delaware beaches hi robin hi martha from maine hello miss olivia so welcome and happy sunday so today our youngest from montana is in town so her husband is a beekeeper and they do honey in montana and then January, February, March-ish, they come uh, an hour north of us, which is how she met her husband. He is does pollinating of the um, um, the almonds up about an hour north of us, and so um, they do uh, the pollinating of the trees and all that kind of stuff. So they're in town. So um, we got to go see them, and they got a new house there. So we went to go check it out. And um, we got to see the baby and I didn't get pictures because I was on duty when he woke up because they went walking the property and stuff and my husband wanted to check it out. And Catherine, our youngest, actually wanted to check it out too because they just got here from Montana and they wanted to go look at it. I'm like, I will wait for the baby to wake up. And so he did. He is a big baby. I got to find out how much he weighs. But he just turned a year in August and I went to go lift him up out of the playpen and he was a little, little chunk. And so, and his little hands are like, like this. They come up like, the, they're just, he's a big boy. He is, but his dad is like six, four. Um, so, um, lifting him, him up was a challenge. Uh, let's see, Carol, a lot of people complaining about the post office returns weren't, yeah, Carol, I've heard the same thing. And I don't know what was going on. I received a card back from September. Barb, it was actually to you. It had your correct address. And it came back from September, your thank you card. Weird, I know. I'll just throw it in one of your next packages. Uh, let's see. Uh, eight inches. Oof. Oh, you have a friend in Clovis. Very cool, Rose. I love Clovis. Are you hoarse? You know, Debbie, um, I don't know. I woke up this morning. I haven't had to take an allergy pill in a long time. And for some reason today, I'm like a little stuffed up. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I took a pill. I told my husband this morning, I, I think I'm going to have to take an allergy pill today because it's just, 
which is weird because it's been raining and normally that kind of cleans it up but yeah one degree celsius holy happy sunday everyone too cold for me debbie you are right um, it was like 47 today and I was freezing. I was going to talk about that a little bit. So we were there at their house and they're from Montana. Okay, so they've got t-shirts on and they're like, oh, it's a beautiful day. It was, it was sunny, um, but I was freezing. I kept my coat on the whole time. It's a new house. They had it, you know, kind of, there's no furniture in it yet or anything. I'm just, there, uh, there's a bed. Um, they're minimum because they're only here for a little bit of time. Um, oh, thank you, Kathy. I appreciate it. Um, so it was just really cold, but, uh, me Eskimo girl, for whatever reason, I'm cold all the time. Olivia even got me a sweatshirt and it says, yes, I'm cold. I think 24 seven or something like that. Um, I, or I'm always cold cause I am always cold. Um, but yeah, so that was fun. Other interesting fact today. So when we went to go see them, they have bees. So he's moved all of his, not all of them, but a lot of his bees onto the property because it's in the country. So there's, they've, they've got a lot of property. So they put all these beehives. There are bees swarming everywhere. So he comes up to our door and he says, don't swat at the bees, just get out. And, and I'm not allergic. Um, and my husband's not allergic, but we're like, he's like, just get out and walk in the house like they're not even there. We're talking swarms of bees. So I was like, okay, I'm beelining to the door is what I'm doing. So I went straight to the door and inside, that was fine. And then they're attacking my car. I don't know if it was because it's white or warm or what, but now I know I will not be taking my car there anymore because uh, my car is white and the newer car of our cars. And these bees were just all over the car. Another note, as I said, um, I would not have more perfume had I thought about the bees being like on the property. So that was another silly mistake, but no bee stings. Um, so we're, we're going out and my husband's like, be prepared, the car is a disaster. And I'm like, what? The bees pooped all over my car. So I have little squigglies that look like honey all over my car. And so our son-in-law says, just go through the car wash and wash it and then let it dry. And then you'll just have to go and you know, scratch it off. You like the beeline, Kathy? <laughs> I just kind of thought that up. Uh, but yeah, so you're going to have to just scratch it off with your nails. So my husband's like, I'll take care of the car. So we get home. He goes and washes the car and he goes, it came right off. And I'm like, I bet it comes right off if you wash it like day of, not a week, two weeks later, because they live in the country. That's what they do. They're probably used to it. Um, so they're probably like, oh yeah, let's run a hose over the car kind of thing. Cause you know, that's their livelihood. They have bees everywhere all the time. Uh, so anyway, yay. If you get bees that poop all over your car and they look little squirrels, little swirly honey drippings, that's what it is. So that was an interesting fact I learned today. Um, I'm also going to give you some quick little helpful tips with stamping. Yay. Um, I do have a little cheat sheet. I have, so I know on my last video, I said that I would not have any extra paper shares. Well, it's by four, right? So if I had an odd number that didn't land with the all four pack going, then I had a couple extra. So I ended up having three. I have one left. There's a link below. If you want the last paper share link below, click on it, purchase it, register for it. So I have your address and everything and I will um, get that out to you. Uh, speaking of paper shares, I did it all on my own. I had a lot more paper shares this time. They are pretty much ready to go. I will be doing the labels tomorrow. My guess is they're going to go out Tuesday. I was hoping for Monday. It's going to be Tuesday. So paper shares will go out Tuesday. Uh, no, Deborah, I'm just kind of filling people in on a few things. Welcome. Hi, Julie. Hi, Judy. Um, so that is that for the paper share one left bingo and here's a little bit about the paper share just so you have it $45 you'll get a little bit of all the paper quarter pack of all the mini catalog eighth of a pack of all of the celebration and I explained that on other videos I wanted you to be able to get a little bit of everything 
um, with a purchase that everybody buys, you could only get one pack of the paper. So I kind of changed it up and now we can get all the papers. So um, long story short, there you go. January bingo is going to be the 17th. I get a lot of people that want to register day of, which is fine. But if you would like to get ahead of it and register, make sure you click the link below, fill out the form, then scroll down and pay. Make sure you get your numbers put in there. I need your correct address and I will get everything for you. Don't worry, we will explain bingo night up. You do not need to receive anything prior to the 17th. So don't worry about that if you are interested in uh, playing bingo. The last thing is my B class. It is January the 27th. If you purchase the kit through me, the class will be free. I will automatically put you on the list to receive the suite, or excuse me, the kits when you order the suite from me. Otherwise it is $40. I have January 27th written there only because that is kind of the date. I want to make sure I get you your kits, your video, the PDFs, if there's one, which there will be. Um, and then you just create at your leisure. The video link will be a private link for you to create whenever you want. Um, if you have any questions about the class, just put them in the comments of the video and or message me and I will get right back with you. All right, so that is that, that is that. Um, last thing business-wise is the special. If you have been thinking about joining, if you don't have a demonstrator chosen, I would really love to have you on my team. It is $99 for $125 in product and you can choose either the Glass Mat Studio, which is the mat, the cloth, and the silicone tray there, or $30 in product. So either one, you can choose and add that to your um, kit. Your kit is free shipping. You do not get celebration with your kit, but you get celebration on any orders after that. So um, during the celebration time, of course, January and February. So um, I hope you'll take advantage of that. It's totally worth it. I've mentioned multiple times that not only my very first demonstrator, but several thought that they would just join knowing that they're probably not going to qualify. They're probably not going to be able to stay current. I just, my eye looks really, I'm like, do I have something on my eye that's gonna fall in my eye? But no. Um, so it's it's really going to be, um, I mean, they, they have joined and they're still current. And they're like, I can't believe I'm still current. Um, you can always share your um, demonstrator ship with a friend and let them know. Maybe they can start purchasing from you. Maybe they want to join with you. Um, it's, a, it's a really fun thing to do. And then there's a lot of support and pages out there that I would add you to that you can be a part of the community. And um, it's really great to see a bunch of samples and questions that people ask and things like that. So um, that would be great. We had a swarm of bees come into my yard and land in a tree. We had a beekeeper come and rehome them. Oh, that's a good idea. Dare I say this, I might be the only one who doesn't like the bee suite. Oh, yes, I like the bee suite. But there's other things in the bee suite um, that are going to be interesting because I do kind of some different stuff with it. Um, let's see. Hi, Cynthia. All right, so, oh, I missed a few. Hi, Connie, how are you? I think everybody else I got, if I didn't, hello, hello. All right, so the number one thing is somebody had asked me about my mat and how do I clean it? I clean it with alcohol, absolutely, absolutely. So what I do is this, I got off of Amazon, just say alcohol pump bottle. It already had the word on it and everything. I just take a tissue or a paper towel or whatever you have and I just, Put it on there and then I try to I get all the little glue because I do get glue on it a lot and any kind of ink and look how fast it dries. Oh well you probably can't tell, but it is it is dry already. See how dry that is? Dry, done. Alright, so super easy, super fast. I always have a box of Kleenex, which I ran out of today. So um, I have to go grab a box, but um, anyway, so that's what I do. That takes off the adhesive, it is perfect way to clean your mat. So um, that is what I would do. Hi, Rose. The next tip I have, 
I'm going to show you the card first and then when I get into the card, I have two more tips for you. All right, so here is the card. I absolutely love this new folder and it's called Layered Florals 3D. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? I like that, that you have these little flowers here and then smaller ones. And, but then you have these, which I think they look like magnolias. I'm guessing that's what those are. But absolutely gorgeous. Because it kind of looks like that other folder that we used to have. So um, anyway, great folder. But I wanted to use that. And of course, anything with the scallop, I love with the pretty paper. Oh, I forgot to grab the paper. Let me grab it. I want to show you where I got it from. It's free. So the paper, I got it from our, oh, you know what? I took all of the paper out of here, but it is from the Flight and Airy. Everything is listed below, or now that it's January, we actually have access to list our supplies. Yay. So um, this is the one side, the one we used, and then this is the other side with the larger birds on it. Okay, so these are really nice and easy to cut out if you want to pop on a bird onto a card with this. Uh, but I chose to, to do this to make some cards. So I wanted to show you where the paper came from. So let's show you what I decided on with this card. Um, I knew, This is what I started with because I was like, what do I want to create? I knew I wanted this panel. I had no idea what I was going to do about a sentiment or the paper or flower or anything. And that's kind of, it's funny, I was telling my upline, I said, it's so funny because I have no idea what I'm going to do, but I know I want this. And she goes, but you know what, some of your best cards that you like come out with you saying, I want this, now what? <laughs> and so that's what I did. So I did uh, pre-cut some stuff and I'll give you the measurements. Um, but when I got to the flower, I want to show you some different options I thought of. And I was just like, oh, when I looked up the colors in here, there is not petal pink. Okay, but this is petal pink because this is what I had. Okay, so I first I thought this. Okay, so I was going to do this color and I was going to do bubblegum because it has that or bubblegum, bubble bath because it has that color in the paper. And I'm sure it's a shade in here, and I'm sure this is a shade of it here, but um, I, I just didn't think that went as well, and it didn't kind of pop. I needed something a little bit more. Then it had, what did I do with my paper? I'm gonna put it in here, no. It had Flirty Flamingo, and I had a piece of Flirty Flamingo, and I don't know what I did with it. Well, I had a piece of Flirty Flamingo because I wanted to double check and see if that was a color that I wanted to use. It's so funny when you have stuff sitting right in front of you for the video and now it's just gone. Well, let me grab one. And because that was another color in it, but that was just too much. See, so it would have been this and this and it would have been okay. Um, it would have been a little bolder than the, than the pink and, but I was like, mm. then I noticed that, okay, we have garden green in here. So I decided to add some garden green behind the DSP. And then I added the petal pink on there and it just kind of blended a little bit better, popped a little bit more. Um, so that's what I kind of went with. So let me show you this, what I did, and then I'm going to give you some tips about it. The very first tip I'm going to give you, which my upline, I was telling her my frustration. I normally don't do the, this is called a hot dog fold. I normally do the fold that, you know, let me pull it out. The hamburger fold, which is this one. Okay. So I usually do this fold, but I decided, you know what? I'm going to do this for once. I, I hardly ever do it. Tip. When you, and this is for either fold actually. I decided, because I made a bunch of them, that when I was going to score, okay, so when you put your paper on here, 
I went here and I was going to score. I always tend to use the larger side and I don't know why, but I did my larger side. Well that, oh, I did it on this one. Let me show you the difference. Let's see, where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, I think I ended up using it, but on like this one, it had a much larger indention, okay? And when you think about it, when you think about it, the larger indention makes your paper spread a little bit more like that, right? So then when you cut your inside and you want it super, like hardly anything around the outside, right? Your green and then your blue is going to be really, really close together. It's not going to, it, it's going to be really close up there because this is wider from this bigger, thicker thing. So let me show you. So I'm going to take this one, see if you can see it on this paper, and I'm going to do three inches right there. And now I'm going to turn it over to the smaller one and I'm going to do three and a half. Okay, so let's see if you can see the difference. I can see the difference, but let's, I don't know if you can see the difference. Oh, I wait. Okay. So you can a little bit there. This one is much wider than this one because I used the wide one here, okay? And I used the narrow one here. Now you always want to use the wide one when you do DSP because DSP is so thin, you don't want it to rip. So that's one of the things you can think about is um, to when you when you're scoring. So now I had this one's thinner, but the other one was larger. So doing the inside is like, how come I don't have enough space? And of course, I had scored them all with the larger piece. So just keep that in mind. Um, so hopefully that will help you. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and bring in my silicone mat just because I'm doing video and I don't want to keep cleaning up my mat while I'm on here. So let's Otherwise, when I'm at home, I just wipe it up with alcohol, but you don't need to see me doing that all, the whole time. So I'm just going to do this really quick. Make sure I have my adhesive on here. I like to get adhesive all the way to the corners or the edges as close as I can, so I tend to go off and then it gets on here. Or if it's on the mat, it's not that big of a deal. All right. Now, if you... Um, like I just ch changed blades and I feel like I was pushing too hard. So I have that little line on there. So I just kind of, you can either do it with your nail or lay it down and just take your bone folder. You'd be surprised if you just take your bone folder and just go over it and it'll just smooth out those little rough edges. So that's another little tip. And then I have one more tip for you too. All right, so I'm just gonna add, I don't do glue all the way to the end right on the side because I kind of know, I mean, I could fold it up like I have been, but I know this is really close. So I'm just gonna add that on there. All right. All right, there we go. I like to hold it in the center and just kind of get an idea here so you can see. And then I let go and just make sure as long as this corner is good, then the whole thing should be fine. Thank you guys for the thumbs up. I really appreciate that. You're welcome, Deborah. I'm glad that was helpful. Now, because this one is not like the other ones, but what I started doing towards the end is I started going to the top and getting it really close because I knew my that opening at the top there was kind of wide, but it's not on this one because this one I re-scored, so now I know. It, I just didn't even think about it. And I was like, oh, that is, that totally makes sense. All right, so we're gonna, so this is, um, let me write this down for you. 
This one, same as in the inside, this is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. My normal layering. Okay, oh gosh, you can't even see that. Four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And this one is four by five and a quarter. Okay, so there. All right, so we're going to layer this right on top. And this one I kind of considered an easy card because there's not a lot of die cutting. And there wasn't a lot of fuss. The DSP really does most of the work. And your colored papers. All right, so there's that. So we're going to go ahead and put this on here because we're not wrapping the bow around this. You guys might see prints right here because I did put lotion on. I'm not doing any blending or anything, and I just had put lotion on right before my hands were really, really dry. All right, so we're gonna put this one right on the top. Oops, okay, so I need to fold my paper a little better. I did this one on the scoreboard because the scoreboard is fine too. Not the scoreboard, the trimmer. Oops, did you see what I did? So the trimmer has the thinner score also, so you don't have to worry about that, but I didn't fold it exactly right. There we go. All right, so now let's put this on here. And then I just kind of lay it down. Once I get the top looking like I want it, I just kind of lay it down and make sure that I'm going to have the line at the bottom that I want. Never thought about that, Marcy. Thanks for the tip. Oh, you're welcome. All right, so there we go. There's that. So we'll put that aside. Now, I what I did is let's stamp our image first here. So I needed boho blue. And the stamp set we're using is the Heartfelt Hexagon. Everything's linked below. And, oh, I don't know that I remembered the, this. I'll, I'll add, oh, yeah, I think I did. So um, I did the scallop. And the one I used, I believe, is the second one. Let me make sure. Yes, the second one in from the outside. That's the scallop I used. And then on these, I used, I, I think you could use either, but I wanted to use this leaf here, which is this one, because it has the places for the three flowers. And then a little tip, make sure you put your flowers behind. So that just looks like, because those are the ones that are like the buds. And then they also have the ones, oh, uh, let's see, I think I have one in here. I also have these, the ones that are bloomed, but I wanted to, and you could probably lay those right on top of there if you wanted, but we used the little bud ones. So that's gonna be this one, and then the buds, and then here's the blooms. But see how you have the room for the flowers there too? That's the one, this is the one we used that has the three, but this one also has some. Okay, so uh, you could use either, or these, you could just pop, or the open ones, you could just pop right on top. It kind of gives you a great placement of where those, and this is the uh, stippled rose, stippled, stippled, I don't know how you say it. Okay, so we're going to do that. So let's do, this, and this one again, heartfelt hexagon, I'm using this one right here. All right, so we have that. And then the sentiment I used from the same set, and we're gonna use the, I hope your day is filled with joy. I just kind of wanted a general card, because then you can put thank you or whatever you want in there. So I like to turn my stamp. So another thing is, I think I've showed you this multiple times, but I like to have my stamp on the shorter part so if you put this down, this one is two and three quarters, but if you turn it this way, it's two and a half. So I like my hand to be on the two and a half, not this one, because it's bigger. I like it to be smaller. To, I can manage it just a little bit better. 
All right, so we're gonna ink that up. I look at the I hope at the top because it's bold, it's block, it's nice and straight. Let me see if I can move this up so you can see a little bit better. And see how it's just aligned with the top of your image there. So that's what you wanna look at, don't worry. And then the is filled if you want to have it kind of towards the center, um, that helps too. All right. Thanks, you guys. I'm glad you like the cards. All right, so punch. And then, of course, the heartfelt hexagon comes um, with the punch. And there's a new set in the new mini that you can use this punch with also. Um, or is that the modern one? Oh, that's the modern oval, I think. All right, so let's punch this out. I take my time, make sure you look all the way around, make sure your outsides are as even as you can get them. And the ribbon for this, I believe is four and a half. Oh, it's like four and three eighths inches. And so kind of think about where you want to put it. I just kind of lay it down there and then put your sentiment on. I didn't want it right in the middle. I wanted it kind of down a little ways. So just kind of figure out where your sentiment's gonna be. So it's right on the, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, right on the eighth scallop is where I put it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's kind of funny to watch eight uh, when it's, when it is um, embossed. The other thing you want to do is when you do this, it's going to go down completely anyway, so you don't really have to worry about that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just I just went down eight, so I'm going to go across. When it put, I put the adhesive on it already, and I'm going to go across to the other eighth, so you know. Okay, remember, you want your piece to be straight, so you know it's going to be straight on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess uh, you could put a pencil mark instead of counting over and over. My ribbon's a little short right here, so I'm gonna go a little closer to the edge. Okay, and you want it to go straight. You don't want it to do that because that's what it's gonna look like in the front. Okay, it's gonna look kind of wonky. Hi Vicki, how are you? So make sure you pull it straight on, even if it's just going over a scallop. And then I take my adhesive and I just ensure that it's going to not go anywhere all right and you you can cut that if you want but it's just stuck inside of a flower so it's okay and now i'm going to go all the way around and yes i know i'm using seal i'm going to show you what i'm going to do because we're already using seal to hold that ribbon down i'm going to do seal on the outside because your um your scallops are right there and then i put liquid because i like liquid glue on um embossed Okay, so we're going to bring this in and just put that in the center. Okay, we're going to take this, our sentiment, and I'm just going to pop it up on the edges because you've got that ribbon in the middle. If you feel the need to add it, uh, liquid glue on your dimensionals to make sure that that sticks you can but um, I think it's going to be fine all right so I'm going to put it just about right there okay now here we're going to bring this in I'm going to bring back my mat mainly because it's going to be easier for you to see it so what I did now is I'm going to take my leaves and I'm going to kind of decide on where it's going to fit the best um, because I don't want the leaves to cover up my words. If I put a flower right there, it's probably going to cover. So I'm going to turn it this way. And those are really long leaves. But this one here, I think this is the one I liked. 
Okay, so your leaves kind of go on. You're going to have enough room for your flower. This is a little shorter over here, so it's not going to go off. And that's kind of how I liked it. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to put the largest flower at the top. And I don't, I, I didn't even look in the, on the picture to see which one's which. I just liked it this way. I'm going to put the smaller one over here and the medium one here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it over. So the two, the little two one is going to be on the bottom left. These two have three. See, and then this one has two. So that's how I did it. All right. And then I'm going to turn this over and just put a little bit of ink. You don't want to put, I mean ink, uh, glue. You don't want to put too much and squish it all over. All right, so we're going to do one at a time. I'm going to keep those in order, though. And I'm just going to put this right onto here. And I want this flower to come in front of the leaf, okay? So this one, and then we're going to do this one. This one, it, I, I'm going to glue it on in front of this leaf. So I'm going to put it in front of this leaf, and then I'm going to kind of hold it down and move my greenery over where I want it. Make sense? To see how it's really on top of that. I don't want to start it under and then try to like maneuver it and it, you know, get all wonky on me. So I'm going to do that and then we're going to add our dimensionals. So I added one full size mini on each of the flowers. And yes, I did put it right on top of the flowers and the leaves. And then I took some half ones and except they're sticking on me. Um, and I did it on some of the leaves just because, um, let, me, let me try to see which one, which leaves here. I don't really remember, but you'll, you'll figure it out if there's more you need to put it on. All right, so let's start with this. So I'm gonna take all these dimensionals off, the backings. So now we're going to bring our card back in. Again, the little one's going to go over here. The one that's kind of facing downward is going to be the one we're going to put right on our card. So I hold it on this side because this is the side I want to place it on. So I'm going to get it right about there. I want this one in front and I'm going to lay those down. This one does not have a um, dimensional on, but if you want to, you can. I, I recommend the half ones. So this little guy right here, we'll just add one more. Hello. There we go. And then I have another tip for you I'm gonna share in just a minute that I will, that will save you money. And you might do it already, and I've mentioned it before, but... All right, so there's that. Now, the last thing on the card is I needed some dimensionals, and these are the new in colors, which is the boho blue. And so I thought, well, that is perfect. So I like to do the large one and then the small one together. It just kind of balances it out, and then I put the medium one someplace else. So there we go. Super fun. It's really easy. Just kind of figure out what DSP you want. And then this folder, because it's flowers, I decided that I definitely wanted to do um, a flower of some kind. And because the bird flower paper is free, why not use that, right? So I have to say, at the beginning of the year, one of the things that I start thinking about is, and as a demonstrator, is what do I have on hand already? What do I have a lot of? 
um, you're going to see a card on uh, Wednesday that is some paper that I have a lot of. So pick out two to three patterns that match. So three patterns that match that you have a lot of. And uh, we're going to create something fun um, with that and show kind of how to get, how to use up what you have. The same thing right now is you'll probably see some more in color things um, because those in colors are going to be leaving. If you like those in colors, I mean, we still have several months, but for me, I have a lot. So I want to start using up the items that um, if you want them, you know, you should, you should be getting them. So before they're gone, um, I'm so glad it's freezing a bit. No more rain. Oh, oh, thanks you guys. I'm glad you like the card. So yeah, so uh, a fun card, some embossing, a punch, two die cuts. Oh, well, three if you count the scallop. It doesn't seem like that much because it seems like the paper and the embossing does all the work. Um, so there's that. The other tip that I had for you is I wanted to show you what my, my, <laughs> my boards look like. Okay, so you saw this same board had a bunch of hearts on it the other day. And I use it a lot. And it's starting to crack on the side right here. And same with the top one, it's starting to crack. And I've used them for a long time. I flipped them over. I flipped them this being your mats. This top one is, you know, fairly clean. It might have a little adhesive on it from, you know, doing like uh, adhesive papers and things like that on there, right? So you can clean it off with alcohol and it'll, it'll look really good. But what you want to do and what I like to do is, you know, your bottom mat gets really messed up. I don't like switching my top mat and my bottom mat because when I'm doing things like let me see if I have one right here. Doop, doop, doop. Well, like these. Okay, you want them, can you see them? They're nice and smooth. You want them nice and smooth and where they look pristine because even if you're going to be putting another layer on top of it, you don't want those hash marks from other items on your boards, um, like all these dots that came out of these, you know, on top of it, or this gold that's on here. Uh, you know to get on your card so you kind of need to be careful about that so what I do is I clean my top mat because it's dull from using it but it doesn't have all the grooves and stuff in it right then what I do is, and you guys probably do this too is take a new one of your new plates and use this as your top this is your bottom so now these will be my plates and I throw my plates away sooner than I probably should. It's kind of, to me, it's kind of like changing the blade in your trimmer. It makes a world of difference and it's so worth doing it. And I know we hate to throw those blades away. So what I do is I take my old blades and I at least have two that I put in a special spot. These I use for glimmer, dazzle, you know, anything that's thicker, like that's going to mess up my blade. And then I keep my good blade on my trimmer. Then I will throw this away because I won't use it. I don't want it messing up my boards. Now I have this, but I, I'm using my older one as the bottom one. And then I use this one. And then I will put this one right over here. I have a space that I put. And then that is my next plate that I'm going to use when this starts to get bad okay so what I'll do is I'll then throw the bottom one away move this one to the bottom get my new one and put it on top so that kind of help that's exactly what you do oh good Diana yeah it's I mean it's you know you don't think about it you think oh man two plates I guess I'm throwing them away I'm gonna get a new one I might as well have two new ones well you don't really need to do that move move this one down down and new one on top all right so that is my other helpful tip for you and I like to do that especially when you're getting ready to um, do a lot of labels a lot of label cutting and things like that um, then switch those out um, same with the blades Marsha yeah I do that with the blades just like my contact lenses why do I wait so long before I switch them because when I switch them if you wear contacts when you switch them you're like oh man this feels amazing and I can see so well why do you wait so long I know they're expensive and so you kind of like just like the blades and the plates you kind of want to stretch your use out of them as long as you can 
Uh, that's what I do. Okay, good. Good, good, good. I'm glad. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for sharing. No problem, Shelly. Watch from the beginning. I did lots of tips and tricks. Oh, you're welcome, Linda. Um, so yeah, sometimes I just think about those kinds of things. Same with my blends. Oh, I should have kept my blend. All right, I'm going to tell you a little secret what I did. Um, so on your blend, and I don't think I have one over here anymore. I think I just switched them out. I did. Okay, so on my old olive blend, um, on my last card, this card right here that I did last week, so you can go look it up. Um, on this card, I used Old Olive and same thing with Shaded Spruce. I did a lot of uh, coloring on these. And what you want to do is, so if it starts getting, you notice on your blend, the tip start, well, this one is getting a little bit light. Um, so let me show you. So this one is getting a little light. Let me grab a paper. Let me see how light it is. Okay, this is still a very good pen. However, once the pen gets really, really light on the end and you realize that when you're coloring, you have to push harder to get color, don't take scissors and cut it. You're going to throw it away eventually, right? Because it's running out of ink. But if you're doing not precise coloring and you're doing like coloring things in, then what you need to do is don't cut directly like that. Don't cut a blunt tip. I angle it and cut one from this side and one from this side. So your tip goes like this. And so I cut it like this. Okay, so you're kind of making yourself a new tip right here. And it will last a little longer. It's not going to be as tiny as a tip like the original tip like this is. But if you're doing coloring leaves or larger coloring of images, um, it's going to make your color last a lot longer. The other thing I do is I tip it upward and I just let the ink flow to the end that I need. So if I start my new marker and then I go back, I want to get everything out of this one I can. I know some people add alcohol to it. I don't do that. Um, I have with uh, my old, my, my Copics, I used to do that. Um, and I have a full set of Copics and I don't use them because I love the... Uh, I love our blends because it matches our paper and our inks and everything. I'm allergic to the cleaning liquids for contacts, but I need new glasses. Oh, they have a lot of different cleaning contact uh, uh, solutions now. Uh, the saline for your contacts. I wear uh, daily wear, extended wear. Um, you can just you know keep wearing them or take them out and wear them for a month or whatever. Um, so I don't clean them every day, but I do put solution in my eyes, you know, every day, but there's a lot of different kind that aren't necessarily cleaning, but like a rinsing kind of thing. So you might check it out. Um, oh, you guys are welcome. Hi, Carol. How are you? No problem, Shelly. So that is the card for the today, but for today, <laughs> there you go. So just to recap a little bit about, um, and being a demonstrator, a lot of people wonder about it. A lot of people think, oh, I don't know, I can't do it. It's If you want a discount, if you used to go to Mervyn's and take that coupon and go get your 20% off, if you go to Hobby Lobby and you're sad because you don't have coupons anymore there or whatever, that's all you need to do is shop with coupons. That's it. You don't have to demonstrate. You don't have to have a team. You don't have to do anything except the quota. So if you want to share that with, you know, friends so that they'll purchase from you, um, that you're a demonstrator, then they can help you make your quota. So it's either your purchasing or sales get you a quota. And so if you just have your small group of friends that might want to help you out and that'll keep you current, um, then that's what you want to do. And you do not have to demonstrate, do videos, do classes, do anything like that. You do not have to do that. So, um, that's that. I have all my links below, and um, if you are interested in the B class or Bingo, which is on the 17th, or I think there was one last paper share left. Somebody purchased something. I don't know what it was, but if um, there was one paper share at the beginning of the video, paper shares will go out on Tuesday. 
Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. As usual, I need to go start my last load of laundry. I will see you Wednesday. Uh, pull out three pieces of DSP that coordinate together, and I will see you then. Bye, everybody.